If you're working on Kubernetes in a production environment, especially on a larger project or team, you've probably run into namespaces. We haven't talked about them before, but today we changed that. Hello, Kaslin. Hello, Kaslin? Hmm, Kaslin is in, in this room. Maybe I'll go into another one. Hello, Kaslin? Oh, hi, Carter. What are you doing here? I came to talk to you about namespaces, but I don't think I could reach you before. That's kind of ironic, actually. Namespaces are a tool to keep Kubernetes objects separated as well. If you're in the wrong space, you won't be able to communicate with your objects. I could see that being useful, kind of like how containers allow multiple applications to share one operating system. Namespaces allow multiple Kubernetes objects to share one cluster. Right. Imagining it as a sort of virtual cluster makes a lot of sense because a namespace groups and isolates Kubernetes objects across nodes. And it's not quite as strict as container isolation, because it's still possible to access Kubernetes objects that are in other namespaces. That's good to know. So a namespace is a virtual cluster that's used to make it easier for large teams to work. I've seen these before. I, I was working on a project where the test and production objects were in separate namespaces. Sure, I've seen that. Another benefit of namespaces comes in with setting permissions. Oh yeah, I remember the admin set it up so that only certain people could push a build to production, but anyone could push a build to test. They would have done that using Kubernetes role-based access controls or RBAC. Using RBAC, an administrator can give each user a role, which sets their permissions inside a specific namespace. That makes sense. So the people on my team must have had roles that gave them access to test but only a few people had roles that gave them access to production. Right. Let's talk more about how to set up the namespaces themselves. We can cover RBAC or role-based access controls in a future episode. Sounds good to me. So how do I get started using namespaces? Technically, you already are. Kubernetes starts with four initial namespaces. You can check them out with the kubectl get namespace command. According to the docs, Cube system is for objects created by the Kubernetes system. Cube public is mostly reserved for cluster usage in case some resources should be visible and readable publicly throughout the whole cluster. Cube node lease is for the lease objects associated with each node, which improves the performance of the node heartbeats as the cluster scales. And the default namespace is for objects with no other namespace. It's, it's like one of those bottom drawers in the kitchen. Just throw anything in there. You can get more info about any of these namespaces using the kubectl get and describe commands. For instance, you'll see that describing the default namespace returns something like this. Note that these details show both resource quota, if present, as well as resource limit ranges. Resource quotas and resource limits. Resource quota tracks aggregate usage of resources in the namespace and allows cluster operators to define hard resource usage limits that a namespace may consume. A limit range defines minimum and maximum constraints on the amount of resources a single entity can consume in a namespace. That seems useful if I need to make sure resource usage is staying within certain bounds. Yep. Resource quotas and limits are an important tool for administrators. Since namespaces are Kubernetes objects, I bet I can interact with them using the kubectl create and delete commands. Yes. One thing that's a little different is that since namespaces hold other Kubernetes objects, if you want to get, create, delete, or otherwise operate on objects in a namespace, you must specify that with the dash dash namespaces flag. It seems like a lot of extra typing, but I guess the shorthand dash n isn't all that bad. We can actually shorten deployment here to deploy too. There are a lot of convenient shorthand versions of commands in Kubernetes. That is convenient, though it still seems annoying to have to type the namespace I'm working into every command. Well, you're in luck. If you're going to be working out of the same namespace for a while, there's a way to set kubectl to automatically use that namespace for all subsequent kubectl commands. To do that, you would use kubectl config set context. Now that sounds handy. So I think that's about it for the basics. You should have just about everything you need to know to understand namespaces in case you see them in the workplace. I think so. Uh, let me see if I've got this right. A namespace is a virtual cluster that lets multiple groups of users share a cluster. Each one has its own resources, policies, and constraints, meaning only people or objects in my namespace will see my pods, services, and other Kubernetes objects. Also, I can define rules for who can do what in my namespace, and 
I can enforce how many resources can be consumed by objects in my namespace using resource limits and quotas. Exactly. Namespaces are a very useful tool for everything you just mentioned and more. Wow. Many thanks to Kazlin for sharing knowledge about namespaces. For more information about how, when, and why to use them, please check out the documentation linked below.